Americans in need are not strangers. American power. America hey, Composing Gloves control. here, and today we're going to be taking a look at controlling the round robin inside a contact instrument that doesn't give you round robin controls. So I got a request. They were using this flute here. It's free. I have a video on it. It's a free thing. And the thing about this fruit is the fruit is the thing about this fruit is that this fruit has what's called a round robin. So as I play notes repeatedly, so I'm playing the same note, we notice that it cycles through three recordings of that note. And some of these recordings may not be what we want in our song. Maybe it doesn't fit the moment. We'd like to be able to have more control and turn one of these off. And upper end ensembles, they usually give you controls over this. I include controls in my ensembles. Um, and there's a couple ways you could do it. So there's a really easy way to turn off this and to just demonstrate to you what's going on. Um, it's rotating through these three notes, right? These three groups of samples. And so one way to easily control it is you go to group start options and they have this option called cycle round robin. And you can actually control, um, you can cycle through like one, two, three, one, two, three. But we noticed that this wasn't on. They didn't use this. And so we might be going, um, What's going on? Why Why is it doing it like that? And then we might try this. Try playing different notes. And we say, hey, it's not cycling anymore. It's like picking them at random. What the heck's going on? Well, it's not totally random in this case, but I'm going to show you how to have extensive control over it. So the easiest way is to do this. But um, because it was not done using this method, this method won't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the script editor. Now, I'm going to make this as straightforward as possible. Don't worry if you don't know scripting. It's not a big deal. So we go up to the script editor and we say, hey, here's a round robin uh, script. And so we look at this and we say, aha, this is where that this is where all those robins are living in this tree. So we say, ah, because we noticed that back here they have all these trees. We're like, there's got to gotta be robins somewhere. So we say, okay. Um, and if we click... We see here that we have the instructions on how it's doing its job. So it's got a constant, okay. And uh, now we're going to type directly in this. Uh, I actually use a text editor um, that lets me skip a lot of the formalities that this particular engine requires to have because my text editor will like fill it in and, and make it all nice for me. But we're going to type right in here because what we want to do is not that complicated. So the first thing we need to note is... Um, this is the round robin and that there's this number three. So it says it's taking essentially what this thing's doing is it's looking at these three groups and it is simply playing these three groups um, via the instructions we have here. So if we change this number, I don't want to like explain the whole th uh, everything that's going on here for people who are just have never done this before. But if we change this number and we hit apply, uh, we will notice that it'll leave out the last group. Um, it has to do with this line right here. But what we need to worry about is, you know, uh, the person that asked me this wanted to remove the second round robin completely. Um, and I'll also show you how to remove particular notes and, and do a couple other cool things. So if we want to do that, um, we need to go into our expert tab. And this appears when we're in edit mode. If we leave edit mode, none of our groups show up here. But if we're in edit mode, our groups show up. It's super handy dandy. So we're in edit mode and we say, okay, I want to have control over this. So and right now what it's doing is it's allowing the group. So first on the note, it turns off the groups. It says disallow all the groups. And then it says allow a group, allow this group. And this, you know, this key RR, which is the round robin event note is defined. So we see right here, it's defined as this means is this thing. And so this isn't terribly important that we understand the method that they use to do this. Um, what's important is that we understand that's what's going on. It's it's choosing notes here. So if we want to eliminate round robin two, we have to move it out of this chain because right now it's going um, uh, zero one zero one zero one basically right here. It's going zero one zero one zero one, and so it's looking at these two groups. With three, it was looking at all three, and if we made it one, it would just look at the first one. So if we want to ignore it, we need to move this. And you would try double clicking here, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't work. Wow, that's pretty handy. I didn't know you could do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to say cut selected groups. 
Um, so we have round robin two selected. So we're going to cut that and we say, okay. And we're going to cut the samples and everything. It's all coming out. Now one and three are next to each other. But let's say we wanted round robin two for other stuff um, for now. So we could say paste selected groups, paste with samples. And because we're looking to just eliminate it completely for this one instance. So this is just a convenient way to do it without having to do a lot of work. And so now it'll only look at groups uh, round robin one, round robin three, and leave round robin two out of it. It cycles between those now. So that's a pretty handy way of doing it. However, this way has, it's not exactly the best. Uh, the person who emailed me probably was more like, I want to eliminate one note. I didn't want to eliminate the whole round robin. There were some notes there, and maybe notes in other round robins were bothering um, them. So let's uh, let's look at how to do that. So to do this, um, we are going to say, okay, we didn't want to do that. All right, okay, we'll, we'll change it back. First, I'm going to just load up a fresh instance. That way we have where we were. You would have to save this too as a file. I'd have to come up here and save it. Don't save over it if it's a mod, you know, like right, uh, such and such flute, Freund's flute, uh, mod, no round robin two or something, you know, you put that. So we're going to load up another one and we're going to go into edit mode. And in this one, we're going to say, let's say uh, that on notes, on this note, you hear others that bend. And we notice that's on round robin one. It does this womp, womp, whatever. That thing. Let's say, oh, I don't want that right now. That's not, uh, that's not jiving in my song, bro. So we say, okay, we're going to go in here. We're going to go to our round robin script and we're going to fix this. So we say, all right, um, I still want all the notes. I just don't want that one note right there. So I want to ignore this group there. So we say, oh, okay, okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, we're going to use a little bit of scripting. And now this isn't terribly complicated scripting. We're going to use an if statement. We're going to say, if this, if we hit this note and it's round robin one, ignore it, play one of these other groups. That's essentially all we're going to tell it to do. So we're going to say, if the event note, and so event note just means the note we have pressed. So we've pressed this note, it's the event note, uh, is equal to, and so uh, we don't know what that note is yet, right? And we're not like magic freaky people who just have all these notes memorized. So we're going to go in, we're going to really quick find it. So let's say before we do this, we need to figure out what the name of that note is. And so we're going to say, okay, message. It's going, that means we're going to tell contact, hey, contact, message us this thing. Well, we want to know something. Tell us this thing. So we say, tell us the event note. Now, event note has a dollar sign and it's all capital. Dollar sign is how contact knows it's a variable. And variables in all capitals are, are um, variables that are built into contact. You can't use, they're like, they're, spe they're special. That's all I'm going to, I'm just going to chalk it up to, they're special. So this already exists in contact. Contact knows what to do with this. So we say message out the event note. And that's actually the way I have to uh, type. We hit apply. Now when I hit notes, it's sending us a message down here. It says, aha, contact says this is note 72. So we say, okay, we want to fix up note 72. And we could leave this here. Maybe there are other notes we are not digging. So we could come through here and find all the notes we don't like. And then we could say, all right. Now, we could say if, meaning yeah, if. You need a parentheses, and the parentheses goes the argument of our if statement. It's basically the condition. You know, if this condition is met, then do this thing. If it's not met, just skip over, just ignore this if statement. It's like a political speaker. So we say, okay, if the event note, uh, dollar sign, that dollar sign thing, event note, again, in all caps, it has to be typed to like, just like so. That's how contact knows what it is is equal to. Now, when we say is equal to, there's a difference here. It's not like when we say we're comparing it. Is this thing equal to that? You know, in C++, they use two um, equal signs to say, is this thing equal to that thing? Like, yeah, we don't know. We're checking as a condition versus this thing is assigned to be equal to that. Meaning like if it was X is equal to four, we're assigning four or X could have some value and we're just checking if it's for. So we're saying event notes, is it equal to, like we don't know, is it equal to 72? Um, Cause that's what we wanna know. So we say, if the event note is this value, the spaces um, aren't a big deal. I do it for just to improve readability. So we say, if the event notes equal to 72, then we wanna allow, first we wanna turn off all the groups, right? Cause right now a group is on um, when we hit our note. So we gotta turn them all off 
and then we're just going to turn on the ones we want. So if the event note is 72, we want this command, disallow all groups. And you notice this one's also in all capitals because contact knows what it is. So we're going to say control C, control V. So it turns off all the groups. So right now, if we hit a note, um, if we hit apply, um, it's angry at us right now because I have an end on here and I haven't uh, end if. So this is an if statement. We we have to we have to tell it we're done with our condition. So if our condition is met, we have to have an ending statement. So we say okay, if it, if the event node seventy two, turn off all the groups, and that's it. That's what end if means. And then end on is on note. So when we hit a note, so this is what happens when we hit notes. So we hit okay apply. Now if I hit event node seventy two, nothing turns on. So we say oh crap, we need to turn on certain groups. So let's say you know we want to. Uh, we want to allow group, um, so we'll just take that from up here. I could type it, but, you know, just do that. And um, we want to do it twice, right, because there's two groups. We just want to turn off group one. So we say, okay, we'll leave those other ones. We want to turn on group zero, or not group zero. So we see up here, these are the group ID numbers. They're zero-based. It's pretty common in programming. So we say, we want either group one or group two. So we say group one. In group two, we're not going to turn on that other group because that's a that's the group that has a thing we don't like. If we hit apply, though, we're going to get this. It plays them both. And so we're like, whoa, we didn't want that. We wanted to pick between them, right? Um, so if let's say you really wanted just round robin two, it wasn't a big deal to you. You could just say round robin one or round robin. Yeah, round that'd be group two. And so now when we hit that note, it'll only play that note. So you could go through and selectively do that if that's easier for you. But that might be a hassle, right? So what you could do is you could say um, we could declare a new variable. What we're going to do now, let's say we wanted to pick between um, group one and group two. So let's say we did want to allow the group, but we wanted to allow group one or two randomly. So we say, okay. Well, we need a variable. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to generate a random number between 1 and 2, assign it to our variable, and then have it play that at random. It'll it'll make more sense as we type it out here. So we say okay, we're going to declare and then the dollar sign is the variables cuz you never know those him variables be making you all that money, bro. And we're going to say we want it we are going to declare a variable that is named something useful. We don't want to name it something stupid. That way when we go back, we know what it means. So we're going to say, okay, variable um, random played group, you know, whatever. And so we say, that's what's going down there. And uh, we could follow like conventions and stuff, but we're just going to move on with our lives. And we say, okay, allow group. And now we need to generate a random note. So... If the event note has been hit, um, we want to do something before we disallow our groups. In this case, it doesn't really matter where this happens at, as long as it happens before our groups are allowed. So we say, okay, we want to uh, take our randomly played note. So we're going to probably could have named it something shorter, but our random played group. And we are going to set it equal to. So that's this semicolon means set this to be that. We just talked about it earlier. So we say, take a random played group, set it equal to B, and we want this to be uh, a number, a random number. So there's a function called random. So you type in random, and then we give it an argument in parentheses, whatever this thing takes. So it's, we want it to generate a number. We want it to ignore round robin one, which is ID zero. So we want it to generate either a one or a two. So we say generate a number between one and two. And what this, what the, what's actually happening is the lower number it'll generate is one and the upper number it'll generate is two. So if we had more groups in the middle we wanted to ignore, this would be a little more complicated. But for now, we're fine. So we say, okay, a random played group is now assigned to be either one or two at random when we hit note 72. We say, okay, that sounds pretty simple, pretty sweet. Now all we have to do is instead of saying allow group one, we just want it to allow our random played group. And um, then we have the end if, meaning we're all done. So if note 72 is hit, do this mumbo jumbo. If it's not, do this mumbo jumbo. And so we hit apply. 
And um, oh, it doesn't like what I've done here. End on expected. Did I violate a rule? Declared. I misspelled declare. Ha ha. There we go. Watch your spelling. He would apply. There we go. So now uh, we play our notes and we're like, cool. It's going through doing what we want it to. And then we hit 72. And it's randomly selecting between those, completely ignoring round robin one. And that whoop sample that was there before is no longer there. So that's all you got to do. And so you go through, you do this for all the notes you don't like. I mean, yeah, it takes a while. But if you want to be this customized, you can do it. Don't forget to uh, save your ensemble. So, you know, I might come up here and be like, uh, save edited instruments. And then I don't want to save it over the original because, you know, that's important to have. So I say save edited instrument. No R1 on 70 notes 72. I'm being really specific here, but if you made more adjustments, you know, you'd say edited to have notes I like or something like that. And there you go. So now when you load it up, you'll have like, aha, now when I play with this one, it'll not have those stupid notes I didn't like before and I have the ones I do like. And then you could open the original backup on maybe a new track that you might want more of that bendy stuff on. So anyways, that's that. I know it's a little involved for round robins, but this thing uses scripts. It's really... Um, it's really common, honestly. The group editor start group start options just do, are just don't have enough power for most of the stuff we want to do. So we go to we turn to scripting to do it. And there's actually a bunch more cool stuff we could mess with in here. Um, it's really just a whole nother topic. But anyways, I hope that answered your question and you were able to easily get the thing to behave. Some instruments don't let you go into the background and edit their scripts. Some instruments are locked. Um, other, other instruments don't even let you go into the background, like Spitfire instruments, but they give you access to like everything on their front panel. It's like, all oh, you, you paid enough money. Every, you should have those options anyways. But, uh, anyways, that's that support me on Patreon. I deeply appreciate it. Subscribe and have a blessed day.